Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Now, here's your host, five-time Voice Arts Awards nominee, David Brower. Thanks, Alan. This is David Brower with your 20-minute podcast. Our special guest from Las Vegas is Stephen Murray. He has his roots in England and South Africa. He's been praised for his unique writing style and powerful character development skills. His books cross multiple subgenres, and in addition to being a published author, a public speaker, and an advocate for Alzheimer's, veterans, and homeless causes, Murray is also a partner in a software development and support company, which he originally founded in California in 1982. Stephen, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be a guest on your show. I thank you for inviting me, and I appreciate your listeners for tuning in. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Where did the writing bug come in? (laughs) Well, the writing bug actually came in here in Las Vegas. I do think Las Vegas is a creative vortex. Um, There are lots of authors, and you look at all the creative shows. Um, I originally set out, David, to write um, a book on my travels, because I've traveled extensively throughout the world, and I thought um, it would be nice to sort of put all the cultures and different experiences down on paper. I did actually meet a publisher, and, and... she said, you know, those kind of things don't sell. You need to be writing fiction uh, specifically for women. And uh, wow, I had discovered a joy of writing as I wrote my biography. And I, I hunted around to, to think about what I could write for women's fiction. Of course, it's a subject I know nothing about or knew nothing about, that's for sure. Yeah. But I did stumble across the idea about writing about a fictional Las Vegas wedding chapel, as you know, with a marriage capital of the world. And yep. Uh, it was a fun book to write. Well, and you you can't, uh, you know, anytime you hear that, or me, anytime I hear that name mentioned, I just think of Elvis Presley. That's, you know, that's all I got. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it's a huge industry, David, here in Las Vegas. It's, it, I think we're the only city in the world that's got its own wedding chapel, Chamber of Commerce. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a huge $2 billion a year industry. And in my book, there there is, a, you can't have a book about a fictional Las Vegas wedding chapel without a chapter with an Elvis well, yeah. impersonator. Yeah, in it. I hello. Mean, so <laughs> there, is a, there is a fun chapter of, uh, involving an Elvis impersonator. Oh, I bet that's true. So you've got two books on there, the, the Chapel of Eternal Love and then Return to the Chapel of Eternal Love, plus Murder Aboard the Queen Elizabeth Second and discreetly yours. So, which which books came first? Well, the chapel was the first one out uh, the gate. Um, in fact, when I wrote it, I just wrote it to see if I could do it more as a challenge. And I proceeded to write a murder mystery. But by that time, I'd got to know a few authors and found out that other books were selling and other genres. And I wrote Murder Murder Aboard the QE2, and I took that to be the first published book and. Uh, they wanted to know what else I'd written, and I said a, a book about a fictional Las Vegas wedding chapel, and they said, oh, forget your murder mystery. You've got to get the wedding chapel book out there. Oh, so my God. I did what I was told, and and much to my very pleasant surprise, it was very humbling, but um, even though it was all fiction, people wanted to know what happened to all the couples. I'll be darned. So that's, that um, spawned the sequel, and I never thought of publishing the first book, let alone coming up with following <laughs> for each of the couples, but that's what happened. Um, the second book follows all the couples from the first book five years down the road and where their lives' journeys have taken them. So that came out second, and then after I promoted those, I then went and got my murder mystery published. How fascinating. Then this summer, two months ago, I got um, Discreetly Yours, my crime fiction that said also in Las Vegas. Got wow. That published. So I'm just looking at the, I mean, the cover alone gets your attention, right? I mean, it's just, if if a woman's not going to pick up that book, I don't, I don't know who is. So it's, you know, it's a wonderful cover. It says Frankie had it coming as owner of the most exclusive escort agency in Las Vegas. He had crossed the line more than once with his babes, man, that's going to sell some books if it isn't already. <laughs> Oh, from from your lips to God's ear, David. <laughs> Seriously, um, but yes, uh, uh, Jennifer Hart, who did, did the cover design, I I, I love the cover designs of all four yeah. books that I've got. I think they're all great. Um, this last one, yes, discreetly yours. Um, 
I, I thought she did a wonderful job on that. And uh, it, it's a fun book. It's a fun read. And um, I, so far, I'm getting positive feedback on it. I, I need to get some reviews put out on you the bet. website. But I'll so, get there. so you took but, a couple uh, of turns there, didn't you? You wrote your biography about travel and all the places around the world. And then and then the publisher says, eh, not such a good idea. And uh, and then you come out with a murder mystery, and eh, not such a good idea. And then you and then you go to Vegas and Vegas revisited, and then finally the murder mystery comes out, and then this discreetly yours, which is uh, seems to be another getaway with murder kind of book. So you you kind of settled back into where you wanted to be to begin with, I guess. Other than the biography, of course. <laughs> yes, which is still sitting in the computer ten years later. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I should probably go back and revisit it because, you know, uh, hopefully we all learn along the way, whether we're writing, painting yeah. or whatever we're doing. Hopefully we all learn and get better. And uh, I, I know my writing style and everything has changed an awful lot and hopefully it's improved. But of course, too, fix, writing fiction is very different than writing, you know, factual personal books. So. I really need to go back and read. How did you wrap your head around that? I mean, to go from uh, from a factual, enjoyable, travel around the world kind of book to, okay, we're going to get into fiction now. How did how did you how did you do that? Well, it it, it was very hard, um, especially the first chapel book. Um, very hard because when when you're writing about emotions and emotions about people who are getting married. I mean, the, the Chapel of Eternal Love, it's a book about love. It's not mm -hmm. romance, but it's all about love and people fall in love for different reasons. And um, so the reader gets suspended there at this wedding chapel and learning all the stories of these couples who are coming there. And it was very hard for me um, putting that stuff down on paper. Fortunately, by the time I started writing that, I was in a writer's critique group where there were four women in my staff. Oh, perfect. And they were just invaluable because um, I'd write things. they say, well, you, you need to give a little bit more detail here. You know, women want to know these things. And I'd say, why? Who cares? <laughs> say, well, you're looking from a man's perspective. You know, you're writing for women. You've got to start seeing things from their perspective. So... Um, it was great, but it was still hard because they're all short stories woven into a novel. So each chapter represents a different yeah. couple. Yes, each chapter is a different couple, all with different stories, all with different backgrounds. And, you know, you, you've got to dig around inside yourself and come up with all these feelings and yeah. emotions. I think that's tough for most men to do. It certainly wasn't right. easy for me, that's yeah. for sure. But um, it, it kind of got the hang yeah, of it. Yeah, being in that group with, with those four women, I mean, that was like, thank you, Lord. I mean, that was the right place at the right time, wasn't it? It was a man of, man of from hell. Yeah. And incidentally, we're, we're still all together. Um, one passed away, unfortunately, but... The others, were, uh, we've been in the same group now for seven or eight years. Oh, my. How fun. But now that you're published, is it always your turn for dinner? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the other three are published authors as well. So it's all good. And <laughs> it, it's a remarkable journey, David. I, I can't speak for other authors, but I never thought that I would be having four books published and if anybody had told me years ago I'd be writing about Las Vegas Wedding Chapel, I would have had them committed to an asylum. Isn't that the truth? Know? Yeah. But we never know what life's throwing us. We never know what, what's going to be ahead or what We journey. really don't. And, I, and, the, and the hard part sometimes is to show up and listen. You know, it's like, well, well, if that publisher hadn't have told me this, then I would have went over here. And if that group hadn't have been here for me, I wouldn't have known this. And, I mean, you got everything just has kind of come around for you to be able to enjoy your new craft, huh? Well, it, it's funny you should say that because I was speaking to a group last week to um, a group of ladies. There were about 50 at the book club over on the other side of town. And I was saying I'd like to be able to say that all of this stuff was carefully planned and carefully managed, but really it's a series of accidents and it was really all serendipity, yeah. you know, it, it, everything just sort of fell into place. And again, it's the twists and turns in life. I that love that. We, we don't expect, but it does happen. And uh, 
that's what makes all the chapters in life so exciting. That is exactly right. I could not agree with you more. Wow. So the Chapel of Eternal Love, the return, and then murder aboard the Queen Elizabeth II. If I remember right, that's in Long Beach, right? No, that's the oh, Queen that's Mary. Oh, that's right. That's the, the Queen Mary. Okay. The Queen Elizabeth II um, is now, believe it or not, owned by the government of Dubai. Really? I believe wow. it's sitting in the harbor in, in Dubai. But I did have the good fortune to go on the QE2 back in the late 1980s. And uh, that's why my murder mystery was originally set in Beverly Hills, but I knew nothing about the lifestyles of the sure. rich and famous sure. in Beverly Hills. So um, I, I took the characters and said they're celebrating their silver wedding anniversary, and they were going to do it on the QE2. And that's how I was able to make it somewhat credible, not the murder yeah, aspect well, of for it, sure. of course, but I was able to know the, remember the name of the, the restaurants and the shops and the, all the sweets and things and like the, that. And what's fascinating to me about the cover, you've got a you've got a two olive martini with a QE2 floating in it and a, a huge string of pearls, and it's just, it's just really eye-catching, you know? Oh, well, yes, um... The, that that cover was designed by a very talented lady, too, by the name of Cynthia Carvajal. Interesting you should comment on that cover because uh, I have submitted that into a book cover contest that's that's held uh, by an organization called allauthor.com. And every month they have a book cover contest and people can submit their book covers and, and then the people that go and view, they go and vote for the covers and then it goes into a second round and a third round and then the final round as they eliminate various groups. So I've submitted it and I, I hope it yeah. gets somewhere because it's, it, it's Oh my gosh, it's cover. so unique. And I got to think that, I mean, win, lose, or draw, just being in the in that kind of competition at some point has got to help you sell a few books, I would think. Well, one always hopes. One never really knows. It is kind of a um, it's kind of a David, crap shoot, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. Like doing radio interviews, all of a sudden, you you get an order from Amazon, or you see some orders go through on Kindle, or um, you see some orders through the through Barnes and Noble stores. Or I, I have the book distributed, so people can go into any bookstore anywhere in America and, oh, and nice. order the books. And all of a sudden, I get something from the distributor saying, you know, so many books of yours have been ordered, and uh, here's your little check, and what have you. And who knows what prompting <laughs> orders, where they come from, how they Isn't hear Isn't that them. the truth? Yeah. You know? I've done a few audio few audio books yeah. in my life. I'm a voice actor by profession. And so I've done, I don't know, maybe seven or eight audio books. And, and a couple of them uh, I did just on a royalty basis, or split royalty basis, because I just love the books. And so for the past eight years or so, I get this little check of, you know, 17 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is. And um, and I, I got a report from it the other day, and I they had sold 358 copies of this book. And I'm going, well, crap, where's my check? <laughs> you know, but it was... <laughs> But it wasn't about it wasn't about that. It was about I just really, really loved the the stories and the, the text and the history and all that kind of stuff. So, do you have any of your books? And you've got such a wonderful voice. Have you thought about doing audio books for yours? Yeah, I I have. You know, um, I've toyed with it and I've investigated it, and um, it's kind of cost prohibitive in many ways. And to get the return on the investment, That's true. I mean. I don't think any independent author writes for the money. I mean, right. let's face it, if you don't have a traditional publisher behind you, it's very tough yeah. anyway for most independent authors. It's a lot of hard work going out doing presentations and book signings and so on and so forth. The marketing aspect of it is hard work, yeah. but it's fun. And um, the audio aspect, yes, I have met with a gentleman here that does voiceovers and we've We've had lunch, and I've toyed with it. I, I guess it's it's finding the time and making the time and setting aside the money and say, let's "Hey, go. let's just go yeah. for broke and let's do one. Let's do one and see how yeah, it there pans you go. out." There you go. So I, I'm having this thought about your original book, um, the biography about all the travels around the world and all that kind of stuff, and 
I'm seeing this kind of, you know, like you did the the Chapel of Eternal Love and then the Return Chapel. I'm seeing this kind of thing where you, you have these sequel of books, and each place that you visit in your tours all of a sudden turn into these fictional murder mysteries for women. And your so your true stories were already done. The travel's already done. The text is already done. Just turn them into fiction, man. That'd be that'd be fun. Well, I, I, I could do that. I I suppose that that's uh, one thing to do. My travels, you know. Fortunately, I've been blessed. I've been on all five continents, and you know, Australia and and Machu Picchu wow. in South America, and and uh, the Galapagos and the kingdom of Bhutan and up in the Himalayas and Hong Kong and Bangkok, Thailand and most of Europe and of course a lot of yeah. Africa. So, And in North America, I've been to a lot of places in Canada, across the United States of course, and a lot of places in Mexico and French Polynesia and Micronesia but they've all well, been... You've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of romantic places there that deserve a good murder. <laughs> they really <laughs> are. Um, but you know what? Times change, and they do. Yeah, um, right. places and every everything changes. And even on the murder aboard the QE2, I went on it in 1989, and the couple is celebrating their silver wedding anniversary. And I had to think of what they would be. How did they meet in 1964, and how did they make their fortune? Oh yeah. Of course, I thought of the British invasion. I thought, oh well, you know, let's make the musician and. His wife is a would-be singer, and uh, that's how they met. And he got the, got on the wave of the British invasion. And um, but I had to set it back in the eighties because even the QE2, you know, it kept getting remodeled and updated, and some of the stores were ripped out, and the restaurants changed, and so on and oh, so true, forth. Oh, true, huh? So um, to keep it authentic, I had to set it back in time. Yeah. And the same would happen is like Hong Kong's all changed. Well, look what's going on in Hong Kong Yeah, you're right. Well, how fascinating. We're just about out of time here, and I want to make sure that people have the opportunity to reach out to you and and, uh, buy your books. And and, uh, you want to go to authorstephenmurray.com. That's author and then Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, authorstephenmurray.com. And and you can read about his books. You can read about his travels, uh, his background, his speaking. And uh, you do so. You're doing public public speaking on your books, are you? You're doing book shows. Or uh, well, doing? well, I I get invited to a, um, quite a few book clubs to go and speak, and really anywhere where I'm given the chance. Um, on Sunday, uh, I was speaking at an art gallery. There's yeah. um, an exhibition put on with local Las Vegas authors, an art exhibition. It's called Authors' Portraits, and they had all these portraits of local authors in the oh, gallery, fun. and it's going to be there for three weeks, and they have authors coming. And so I'm going to speak there, speaking at senior citizen centers. That yeah. uh, They seem to enjoy the books. And they, senior centers enjoy it when people from the outside world come in and talk that to them. That is and true. They feel they haven't lost touch with the outside world. So wherever I'm asked to go and speak, um, I go and put my best foot forward. So they're going to, uh, they're going to put a painting up of you up there. <laughs> painting. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but in, oh, in the man. art gallery, they, they do have, um, we did all get photographed and the photographer, David Dahane put up all these, uh, the pics of all these authors, uh, the black and white photos, but, oh, okay. Yes, so they're, they're on the gallery, but just for three weeks, but just for three weeks. <laughs> Very cool. Hey, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you, Stephen. Continued success. And um, I love the one one quote on your site. It says, there's a serenity and a peacefulness in those places that can seldom be found elsewhere. And isn't that the truth? So congratulations on your book, Continued Success. And uh, they can folks can buy your book right there on your website, authorstephenmurray.com. Uh, also available in uh, your favorite bookstore right around the corner. Thank you very much, David. It's been a pleasure being a guest on your show. Thank you for the invite. And once again, thanks to your listeners for tuning in. And best of success with 
your new career too with the podcast and and your voiceover. Thank you so much. Listen to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower on the go. Downloads are available on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, any podcast app, and on our website at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thank you for listening.